is the Browns' defense legit? They held the Bengals to three points in week one, but a lot of people are already attributing Joe Burrow's failures to the rain, to his injury, and those are factors. And the only thing that we all are going to bicker about, but we really can't ever figure out, is what percentage of that is attributed to the rain and to his injury, right? Is it 5% or is it 50%? Because if it's closer to 50 sure, the Browns' defense looked awesome, but that's not sustainable. They're not going to play in bad weather every single Sunday, and they're not going to play injured quarterbacks every Sunday. I don't think it's closer to 50%. I think it's closer to 5%, and I'm going to tell you why on today's show. But we are having a like battle with Steelers talk here, our Steelers YouTube channel at Chat Sports. They've got a very slim four-like lead on us. We had a good lead, I believe, last week against the Bengals. Let's come back this time. Let's demolish the Steelers. I want this to be a start of a new chapter in the AFC North. And as corny as it may sound, I don't want the Steelers to get a break. I want them to suffer pain on the field. I want them to suffer pain online. And that's up to you guys. Hit the thumbs up button. Let's take down Steelers talk. So now talking about the Browns defense. Let's just kind of run through some of the takeaways and just, just the facts, okay? Just the facts of the Bengals' offensive struggles in week one. They punted it seven times. They had five three and outs, 142 total yards, less than 50% of time of possession, and only six first downs. That is dreadful. That is what we all would have expected out of the Arizona Cardinals week one. Josh Dobbs and the Cardinals did better than Joe Burrow and the Bengals did. Burrow was less than 50% on completing his passes, only 82 yards, zero touchdowns, zero interceptions, didn't even get to finish the game. They had to trot out Jake Browning out there to try and get themselves to the bus. Jamar Chase talked a lot of shit before this game. Dude didn't even come close to pack backing it up. T. Higgins still does not know what a football feels like this season. He has no idea. They could have made the football's nerf, and T. Higgins would not know because the guy didn't touch the ball in week one. Chase, meanwhile, five grabs for 39 yards. As far as Jamar Chase goes, that is a down day for him. The Browns' defense ultimately, put the stats aside for a second, just eye test it with me here. Just watching them play, they were flying around the field. This looked like a different unit. Last year, after big plays, it just felt like, Okay, we can exhale, but we know that this is not going to last the rest of the game. This year, it feels like this team just feeds off one another, right? And after every single big play, they just want to go out and get the next big play and make it a bigger play. I, maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm the only one that felt this way. But watching the Browns play, just Greg Newsome walking around like a bad MFR, just no fly zone. Miles Garrett. Throwing Joe Burrow down on fourth down. Zadarius Smith getting to the quarterback on the first play of the game. Grant Delpit was maybe probably the best of all of them. Like, it never stops with this defense after week one in terms of guys having great plays, terrific contributions, but most importantly, just a different vibe for this defense compared to previous years. The man defense held up just fine. I don't know who needs to hear that, but the man defense for the Browns was just fine. And Miles Garrett is Miles Garrett. The guy had an 89.9 overall PFF grade, six pressures according to PFF, one sack and two tackles. And he wasn't even the best player. I mean, PFF had Grant Delpit and Darius Smith graded out higher than Miles Garrett. Do you know what that does to opposing offensive coordinators? It takes hours off of their sleep going into their week against the Browns. Because Miles Garrett, the best player on this team, was the third best player, in some people's opinions, after this game. Delpit and Darius Smith outplayed him. That's a very scary sight. That is not good news for the Pittsburgh Steelers or for anyone else. Greg Newsom played a great game. Shelby Harris was not even a starting defensive tackle. And he still had a really good performance. But this Brown secondary, clap it up for a moment. Denzel Ward completely shut down Jamar Chase. He stole his lunch money. Martin Emerson, Greg Newsom, these three guys, they are just the three amigos. They are the three musketeers. They play hard for one another. They play fast with one another. They enjoy what they do. They take pride in what they do. And that is shutting shit down. 
There was nowhere for Burrow to go. Because everywhere he looked, 21, 23, or 0 is all he saw. He wasn't seeing ghosts. He was seeing nothing. All he saw were Browns jerseys. That was Joe Burrow's Sunday in a nutshell right there. Never saw a white jersey. Couldn't, could not find an open guy to save his life. But I know what everyone is saying. But Petey, the rain, uh, uh. You know what? Both offenses and defense played in the same conditions. The rain didn't stop when the Bengals came on the field or came off the field. So both units, two offenses, two defenses, played in the same conditions. One offense scored 24 points. One defense held their opponent to three points. So sure, the rain played a factor. But you know what I'm not going to buy into? The rain only helped the Browns and impacted the Bengals. One team was able to overcome that obstacle. That team, I think, is on a good path this, this season. Now, you're going to be on a great path, by the way, if you get started with our sponsor today, which is Game Time. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful, okay? Well, with Game Time, it's not because they have fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. They've got flash deals and last-minute tickets, easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. So if you want to go to, say, a Cleveland Browns game, a Cavs game, a Guardians game, or wherever you live and whatever you want to see, Make sure you are using the Game Time app to get the last minute tickets at the lowest price guaranteed. You can actually see, what we'll, we'll throw on screen in a moment here, what your view will look like before you even sit down in your seat. Thanks to Game Time, they actually give you a great bird's eye view of what your seat's view is. So you're not tricked or you're not uh, misled in terms of how far up you are in the nosebleeds or how close you are to the field. Thanks to Game Time, they have so many great features to allow you to truly know where you'll be sitting. So there's no surprises for you and all your friends when you go to the Browns game. Now, they also have an awesome deal, which is getting $20 off your first purchase when you download the Game Time app and use code BROWNSCHAT to get $20 off. So forget planning months in advance. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. You can get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. Download Game Time today, create an account, and use code BROWNSCHAT for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply, but once again, create an account, redeem code BROWNSCHAT for $20 off. Download Game Time today, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. I thought you all might want to see this quote from Kevin Stefanski on the Browns' defense in week one. The story of the day is our defense, and I just gave Coach Schwartz the game ball because that defense was outstanding. To hold that offense, and I have a ton of respect for that team and that offense and that whole team in general, but to hold them to 143 yards, 2 of 15 on third down was very impressive. And Stefanski, you're spot on, dude. So let me know what grade you would give the Browns defense. Not just like week one grade, but going into week two just as a whole, an entire unit, what grade would you give the Browns defense? An A, B, C, D, or F? I think it's an A grade. I think this defense is legit. I am not just saying that as a prisoner of the moment. I'm not overreacting to this Browns defense beating up on, say, like, Josh Dobbs and the Cardinals, or Ryan Tannehill and the Titans, or Anthony Richardson and the Colts, right? Some of the uh, bottom feeder offenses out there. This is the Cincinnati Bengals offense. This is Joe Burrow, cool Joe. He scored three points. This defense is legit. Now, I do want to talk about this defense moving into week two because they've got the Pittsburgh Steelers, who got curb stomped in week one. Brock Purdy threw for 19 for 29. 220 yards and two touchdowns, but Kenny Pickett, 31 for 46, 232 yards, one touchdown, and two interceptions. Allen Robinson was their leading receiver with 64 yards. So honestly, I feel a little bit bad for Steelers fans, for the Yenzers out there. Jim Schwartz against Matt Canada, that is not a fair fight. Matt Canada, the Steelers' offensive coordinator, is the worst offensive coordinator in the National Football League. With Matt Canada entering his third year, 
as the Steelers OC. Look at what his offense has done. First off, let's go back to on Sunday where they were at the 8-yard line, at the 49ers goal line, and Matt Canada pressed the wrong button on his controller. He had the offense legit run four verts at the 8-yard line. There's only 18 yards until the back of the end zone. Four verts was the call. Nine total run plays in week one. Nine. You think that's a good idea to kind of ease Kenny Pickett into his first year as the starting quarterback in week one, only giving Najee Harris, former first-round pick, mind you, nine rushing yards or nine rushing uh, attempts split with Jalen Warren? Probably not. The jet sweep on the second play of the year, anytime you can overcomplicate things on the second play of the season, why don't you? Jet sweep, yeah, that's definitely not going to result in a blow-up play against a very talented 49ers defense. Zero 400-yard games in 36 games as an offensive coordinator. Not once under Matt Canada have the Steelers' offense come away like, you know what, we just dominated today. We put up anything we wanted to. The field was the ours for the taking. Zero 400-yard games as the offensive coordinator. And finally, 27 of 36 games under Matt Canada, they have scored less than 20 points. 27 out of 36. I'm not a great guy at math, but that sounds like over two-thirds of the time, they're not even getting to 20 points. Yeah, Jim Schwartz against Matt Canada, it's not a fair fight. This one's over. So predict the score for me, Browns versus Steelers down below in the comment section. I'm taking the Browns in this one. I think Cleveland wipes the floor with the Pittsburgh Steelers. This is my first score prediction because I always change it as we get closer to Sunday. But give me the Browns 27, Steelers 13. I know it sounds weird the Steelers score more points than the Bengals did, but I just think that the Browns can't hold every opponent to three points, and the Steelers at home might be able to pick up a touchdown and some field goals, but still, the Browns take care of business 27-13. to Now, to wrap up the show, we're going to bring back a segment that we did last year at the end of shows after every single week, and that's Petey's Doghouse. And this doghouse changes depending on if the Browns win or lose. But they won, which means we are giving out extra treats. So a good boy, everyone's got every neighborhood, every apartment complex, every household has that good boy always getting an extra pet or two. The good boy, Greg Newsom. Newsom has been a player that probably, and I'm somewhat guilty of this, has not gotten enough credit for being a very good, talented cornerback in the league. He's a good boy. He was really good in week one. Uh, extra treats, Zadarius Smith. He gets a couple extra treats. Just sneak him one under the table because he started his career off in Cleveland with a bang. The pressure on the first play of the game leading to an incomplete pass. And then after the game is over, the guy's trying to go party and hang out with the dog pound in the MVP club or section or whatever you want to call it, going into the locker room. That's a Cleveland Brown player. And then finally, no leash, meaning there's that psycho in everyone's neighborhood. For me, they live on my floor in our apartment building. They don't put their dog on a leash. They're like, no, no, we trust it. Who are you impressing when you're doing this? No one goes to bed at night being like, isn't it crazy what the couple in 4432 do? No dog on their leash, no. But if there was someone I trust so much they don't need a leash at all, it'd be Jim Schwartz. Like, Jim Schwartz, do what you want. The world is your oyster, Jim Schwartz. Call whatever you want to call. You have no disagreements for me, no armchair quarterback for me. Jim Schwartz is off the leash. Make sure to follow me on Twitter, by the way, at Matthew PD. I'm always talking brownies over there. So if you want more Browns content in your life, hit me up on Twitter. 